it's not so much I'm going to be talking about doing your best as in doing your best. I am an engineer. I am all about the doing. I'm all about the nuts and bolts of how do you get things done. And you guys are very successful people. You already have the best in mind. You know what you're shooting for. I'd like to help you with some tool, maybe one little tool, that can help you do your best on whatever it is that you're doing. I think to help that, why don't you all get that in, he in your head? Some project you're working on that you want to go well? Some performance that's coming up that you want to go well, that you want to do your best at? Does everyone have one in their head? You already know a lot about what you need to do, right? Tell me one thing that you're going to do so that you do your best. Who wants to go first? One thing. Ruth. Send an email. Send an email. There's something that needs to be done beforehand to get the ball rolling. One more thing. Organize my ideas. Organize the ideas. Got to do that before you can actually share the ideas, right? One more thing. Set a goal. Set a goal. All of these things are preparation. If you want to do your best, you've got to prepare. You've got to do a lot of preparation before you can then do your best. We all know that, right? Every one of us knows that. We know for most of the things we do, we know the preparation that's needed. Doesn't always go that well. <laughs> Doesn't always go that well. Sometimes it looks like this. You remember that old, you remember that old sign, think ahead? You all seen that before? You have this idea, oh, I'm going to do all this preparation. And somehow it starts off really well, and at the end, it gets kind of crunched. I used to, for, for years, the first few years I did workshops, there was a total panic in the house the last three days before I left on the trip. Somehow I started early, and somehow the work at the last three days was always completely overpowering. And it was, it was, it took me, I think maybe I'm a little slow, it took me probably 10, 15 times before I realized, you know, it shouldn't be this way. And what is it that gets caught? What is it that is happening here that should be happening here that gets crunched? A little louder? The finished product. The finished product, well, the finished product, I was thinking this is a preparation, so the finished product is next. The thing right before the finished product, like if it's a speech, the last thing you do is rehearse, right? That's the thing that gets short shrift. If you're an engineer and you're sending out a product, a new product, you know what gets short shrift? The testing. That's why your software is buggy, right? <laughs> if you're a writer, what is it that gets short shrift? It's the editing. That's why there are typos in what you get. So it's a problem. It, it's a problem. It was a problem for me for a long time, and then I decided, okay, I've got to solve this problem because I want to do my best, and if you don't do the editing, and if you don't do the rehearsing, and if you don't do the testing, you aren't going to do your best. That is at, that's where the quality control comes in. You are limiting what your best is if you don't make sure that the end of your preparation is what it needs to be. So I have one little principle. I have a whole course on this, but I have one principle I want to share with you on how to make sure that the prep goes the way you want it to. Draw a line. Draw a line in the middle of the prep. Do you see what happened there? Just a little line in the middle of the page, and suddenly I knew how big to make the think. And I left room for the ahead. Just one little line in the middle of the page. This is, there's a general principle here. We have trouble thinking about a lot of things and thinking about how a lot of things fit in a big space. But when you make it a small space, it's much easier to figure out how to fit things in. When you bring it down to a smaller scale, you can get your head around it. My mother had to clear her attic she, when she sold her house. 
And it was impossible. And I think she never really got started on it. Finally, I came up and we said, we're going to go through this in two days. There were probably 150 boxes in that attic. But when you have two days, you see, OK, we can only really spend five or 10 minutes on a box. So that's it. We got the scale right. We were able to go through the whole attic. That's what you need. You need something to scale it. And I think you all know how to scale the projects that you have. If, if, it's, if, it's writing, if it's writing something, what is the big line that you need to divide? Between drafting and editing, right? If it's speaking, it's between preparing the speech and rehearsing the speech. If it's building a product, it's between design and build and testing. That's where you need to draw the line. You always need to draw the line between the creative process, the creative process that's going to get you to where you're then ready to build, and the testing process, the editing process, the quality control process. That's where it's good to draw a big line. I want you to think about your project again. Do you know where you're going to draw a line? Do you know what the big line is in your project? What's going to be the problem with that line? I want to move it. <laughs> right? So the line is here. And you say, OK, I'm going to stop writing my speech, and I'm going to start rehearsing. And you get up to the line and say, oh, well, couldn't I just do a little more writing? I, I'm just going to move the line a little bit. And you move the line. What you need to do is you need to cross the line. Right. You need to go over the line. You need to say, that is a line, and there is a reason for that line. And what's the reason for that line? It's because you're seeing, well, well why is it so hard? What is it that tempts you to move that line? Who wants to share? You've got a laugh on your face. You want to give yourself a little more time, and you keep seeing things that you could do, right? You're, in the, you, you're, not, you don't, you're not ready to rehearse yet, because you still see something good that you could put in there. Or you're not ready to release that product, because you still see another feature, that it really needs this feature before it goes. So you keep, you've got all these great ideas. That's what it's like in the creative phase. When you're in the creative phase, you're in your imagination, and you have a million great ideas, and it is fun. It's fun. Everything is possible. Everything, is, everything could be wonderful. And now you've got to stop being in that wonderful, imaginative place. And you've got to go into hardcore reality and say, oh, god, this is what we have now. This is the reality, <laughs> right? And you actually rehearse the speech. You say, oh, no, that needs work. Or you, put out the, you test the product, and you say, oh, it's buggy. And now you have to deal with the bugs, and you have to deal with the typos, and you have to deal with all of that stuff. Well, that's all the quality control. Quality control is not the sexy part of the job. Creation is the sexy part of the job. But you need to draw a line if you want to do your best. You need to draw a line and say, OK, I've been creative. I have a lot of great ideas. I need to put on my quality control hat. I need to make sure I give myself the time to take these ideas I have and, and put them out into the world. I need to draw a line. So that's what I would like you to take away here. You all have things you want to do your best on. Is there a line you need to draw? And are you willing to cross that line instead of push that line? so you can do your best.